but when you get into guitar technique, specifically rock guitar technique, and you learn this kind of thing. <laughs> which is our three note per string uh, scale, major scale, based on G. Uh, I know when, back when I first learned it, I didn't really think that much about what the intervals were. I just took the shape and whenever I had a backing track to play over or it was in a band scenario, then I just blast through the notes, hoping that the phrases that I played make any sense. Um, generally, it failed miserably and uh, the main reason for that is that whenever you improvise, it's really, really important that you know what the intervals you're playing are against any given chord. So what I'm trying to say is shape-based playing is, or can be very, very, very useful, but it's extremely important to use it in conjunction with knowledge of intervals. So whenever I play a scale, I'm constantly thinking about the intervals against any given chord. So for instance, say we have a G major seven chord. If I'm playing this scale, even if it's three notes per string, I'm always gonna be thinking of the, whichever note that I'm playing. For instance, major seventh, fifth, fifth, ninth, major seventh, fifth, ninth, fourth, whatever it is. I generally use shape-based playing when I'm playing something that's fast uh, because I just do not have the time to be thinking of what the intervals are when I'm playing, you know, something, you know, a, a fast arpeggio or, you know, whatever. I don't have time to do it. But what I do do is when I reach the end of that line, say it's something along those lines, here, let's say it's in A, for instance. So one thing I really suggested that you do is you, you try and um, internalize these intervals. So you can just start with a basic major scale and have a chord going in the background and just play the notes of the scale, but really listen to the note that you're playing, the interval, how it sounds against the chord. Um, and you've got to spend quite a long time doing this. Uh, and you can test yourself wherever you are on the fretboard just by playing random notes and seeing whether you can actually identify what that interval is against the chord that's happening in the background.